Hi everyone! Just wanted to get on here and do a Share the Gospel Challenge update. Um, I wanted to update on day 24, uh, 25, uh, 26, 23, 24, 25, 26. Um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We have been sharing the gospel at the university this week, so I've been sharing the gospel every day. Um, it is during an outreach. It hasn't been in my day-to-day -day life, uh, but during outreaches, life is very full. So I don't really have too much time outside of the outreach to share the gospel. Um, David and I have been updating on those outreaches and what's been going on. So I'm not going to share too much from those days. Um, we've been sharing the gospel. It's been great. Um, but yesterday we felt led of the Lord to not go to the university and to stay home. And so um, I had to get my share the gospel in. So I we went to the park after our day um, and a meeting and other things. We went to the park to the duck pond to share the gospel with someone and there's still this fear and this I don't want to that rises up inside of me when it going to share the gospel and I'm praying about that asking God to remove it from me asking him to show me where it's coming from because I have so much faith in other areas for God to come through for me. I have faith for him to come through for me to provide. I have faith for him to come through for me to lead me and guide me and instruct me and teach me. So there's so many other areas of my life where I have faith that God is um, going to come through for me for sure. And it seems like this area, I just for some reason don't have faith. So I feel like God is saying to apply my faith to this area, apply my faith to this area until the stronghold is broken until it becomes something that is my joy and my delight because we are at day 27 of this challenge and I have shared the gospel with someone every single day except for one day and uh, my heart still is saying I like there's something in me that rises up that says I don't want to do this and so I'm it doesn't make logical sense to me so I'm asking God to show me why is that there because God's shown me so many different things about why I've had blockages or hindrances in sharing the gospel um, and so I I don't know why it's there um, I'm asking God to remove it I'm seeking to cooperate with him to the best of my ability and I'm gonna apply my faith I believe that the Spirit of Jesus Christ is sufficient is enough and um, I'm asking God to help me to apply my faith. I would also say I've been, I read things about persecuted Christians or I come across things about persecuted Christians and it always challenges my faith. It always challenges me. Do I really trust you, God? Do I really surrender to you? Do I really yield or do I um, just yield to an extent or surrender to an extent? So um, yesterday, we were at the duck pond and uh, we prayed about who to talk to and there was a couple people who I thought we should talk to um, and David just prayed, Lord, make it happen, make the right encounter happen and the people who I thought we should talk to were kind of far away so I would have had to go chase after them and then this couple was walking by us and uh, David was on the phone but I reached out and I said, hey, I want to give you this million dollars. I almost didn't do it too because of how they looked. They looked just kind of hardened. And I was like, I want to give you this. It's a million dollar bill. It talks about Jesus. Has anyone ever told you about Jesus? Um, they said, yes. I said, what do you think about Jesus? The guy said he's the biggest fraud there ever was. And the girl said, um, it's an interesting story. And I said, why do you say that he's the biggest fraud there ever was? And the guy grew up Mormon. Um, and I said, oh, that I, I, I understand now why you're saying that because there's a lot in Mormonism that is not in the Bible. There's a lot of error and falsehood and um, deception in Mormonism that is not in the Bible. So we actually got into a conversation um, with this couple for a little while and we got to the point where he said, but I don't want to do something against my will. I don't want to have to surrender to this God and do something against my will. And I said, um, are you in a relationship? He said, yes. I said, do you love her? He said, yes. I said, is it hard for you to be faithful to her? He said, no. 
I said, the same is true with God. When you encounter the love of God and he changes your heart, it is not hard for you to obey him. And it's not hard for you to um, trust him because you love him. So God wants to give you a new heart and a new mind. And uh, she was actually an ex-Muslim. So it was an ex-Muslim and an ex-Mormon together. And we shared that God isn't about religion. He's about relationship. He wants to know you personally. And I don't know how it got to this point, but he asked a question about why would God create man with sin? And then I think I said, uh, you know, God didn't create us that way. Um, he created us in his image, but not to sin. And so he then said, well, why would God go through all of it knowing that we're going to end up like this anyway? And I said, God did it for love. Um, he loves you. He, he would die even just for you. If you were the only one who would turn to him, he would go through all of it again just because he loves you that much. So God did it all for love. He He died and, and let mankind go through everything that they've gone through because he loved those who would turn to him. He wanted to offer the opportunity to you um, to turn to him because he loves you. And they both didn't have anything to say after that. It, they, it was just kind of a moment of silence. Their mouths were stopped. Um, and we said, you know, God really sees you. He really loves you. We prayed about who to talk to tonight. And we're here talking to you because God wants you to encounter him personally. He doesn't want to encounter you through religion. And so I said, um, you should read the Gospel of John. And if you ever want to know God, apart from religion, I said, apart from religion, apart from church, apart from all that, I would challenge you to read the Gospel of John and say, God, if you're real, show yourself to me. And he said he'll consider doing it. Um, so the the... God was really present and the encounter was blessed um, and I we were both so grateful to God afterwards we were just like thank you God for that encounter that was really um, good and really blessed so I enjoy being used to by God and I enjoy um, the fruit of talking to people and sharing Jesus sharing what God has done in my life with them um, so I still have yet to figure out unless I it's just a big deception Satan's got my mind rutted um, into thinking I don't like this when really I do. Um, but I would challenge you and encourage you if you struggle with sharing the gospel, um, you are not alone and persevere. There's a verse in Hebrews, Hebrews 10, um, 14, I think it is somewhere in there. It says, do not throw away your confidence since you have need of endurance. You have need to persevere. You have need of endurance. So don't throw away your confidence in God. Um, grab hold of him cling to him and I believe by faith that God is going to go totally change this area of my life because he has faithfully changed every single other area of my life so um, I pray this video blesses you I pray it encourages you I pray you share the gospel and um, you trust Jesus and yield to him with all that's in you okay I pray you have a blessed and a beautiful day a day filled with God's beauty bye